Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a fresh update by RRG Research for Monday the 14th of November and I am recording it on Friday morning the 11th uh, just before the market opens. My name is Julius de Kempenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Let's start this overview, this update with a look at the rotations for world indexes, world indices. And that image remains, well, there's some changes, but the, the, big, the big moves, and especially the one from Hong Kong, that continues to move south further into the lagging quadrant. So <clears throat> that is still, that remains um, uh, the, the weakest market in this universe, in this group of indexes. And what we also see is that the uh, American NASDAQ index, the NDX, is following suit into that lagging quadrant. I'm actually going to blow this up a little bit because we know that Hong Kong is, is down in the south. And then you can see that rotation by the NASDAQ further into lagging. You can also see that the S&P, um, we're, we're comparing this to the, Microsoft, the, the MSCI World Index. And obviously the US market and the S&P is a, is a very big chunk of the MSCI World. So what you will usually see is that uh, the S&P or American markets in general are remaining very close to the benchmark because they are a big part of the benchmark. <clears throat> but the heading of that tail is, um, is negative. It's, it's losing on both scales uh, on, this weekly, on this weekly charts. And uh, what you, the, the big picture that you see here is that especially the European indexes like the DAX and the stocks and the CAC, uh, they are moving into that north uh, eastern direction. And that is a, that is a good sign. So, um, reading from this chart, I, I sort of immediately gauge that Europe is outperforming, is, is doing better than the US, um, especially if you look at the NASDAQ and the S&P, and then the, the Dow Jones Industrials is kind of the exception, because that's going the other way, which <clears throat> you can make the story here that the, the, the Dow Jones 30 are obviously the 30 biggest stocks in, the, in America, that, so that that bigger segment is doing really well. And the broader markets, and especially the well, Nasdaq's not really a technology sector, but it's very tech-driven, uh, are doing not so well. So that's the big image that you get from this uh, from this weekly picture, from this weekly RRG. If we zoom that into the daily, we got a bit of a change going on, and. Um, as I'm recording this, you can see that the last observations are making quite, you know, um, sharp hooks. And that is always a difficult situation because you, you need a little bit more information. You need a, a few more observations, a few more days of trading to be able to tell whether that is really a, a change of direction for those tails or just a little blip. Sometimes they give these little blips. Um, but if we, if we take it as it comes right now, you can see that um, the ones that were doing not so well, so the NASDAQ has picked up here. The S&P, you can see that that last observation just picked up. And you can also see that the Dow, which was doing very well on the weekly, has just hooked around. You can see that the DAX is doing that. The stocks is doing the same. You can see if I blow that up here, that, they, that last day is really weak compared to what's going on in the US. <clears throat> so... When we move to the individual charts, I want to focus on the S&P and the stock 600, basically to uh, take a look at what's going on between the relationship between the US and Europe. So if we start with that weekly chart for the S&P 500, I think that it's very clear that we're still in that downtrend. If you look at price, then we've got uh, clear lower highs and clear lower lows. That, that um, signals a downtrend. That is a downtrend. We're currently moving up within the boundaries of that falling trend. And as you can see, there's still uh, quite some room to move. If you look at the relative strength, the ROG lines versus the MSCI World Index, you can see that, that the S&P is still above. So it's still, um, in the long term, still outperforming the world. And it's, it's on the right-hand side of that ROG plot. Uh, but the line is coming down. Both lines are coming down, which means that it is um, uh, at a negative heading. That's what you saw on that weekly RRG. Now I'm going to jump to the weekly for the stocks. I'm going to skip the daily for a moment. I'm going to move to the weekly chart for the stocks. <clears throat> and what you can see here is that the comparable downtrend that we have seen in the S&P 500 in the stock 600 
is is getting broken. It's on the way of getting broken. Um, that is clearly a, a benefit, a plus for stocks over uh, over the S and P. So uh, a benefit for Europe over over America. And you can see that back in the ROG lines. You saw that the um, the ROG lines on the S and P they were moving lower. And you can see that the ROG lines here on the European Stocks Index, they're moving higher. So that's the, the opposite direction. That indicates that Europe is getting stronger uh, than America. And if we now move to <clears throat> the daily version uh, of those charts, and we have the S&P daily chart here, and you can see that that improvement is definitely there. You can see this little hook here, that is what causing that, that the tip of that tail on the ROG. Uh, to hook back up <clears throat> and on the price chart you see that the S&P is taken out that 3900 level um, that is a good sign however there is overhead resistance waiting already around 4100 so there is definitely some upside but we need to take into account that we're still in that longer term downtrend which could keep the rally for the S&P under wraps now if we bring that to the European version of the stock 600 um, we already saw that on the weekly we're breaking that downtrend and you can see here on the daily that we're pushing against this this peak here that's acting as resistance now this is only up to yesterday's close so it's it's, it's a little bit dangerous to call this a break because it's very well possible that you know market just opens today and we're gonna we're gonna move uh, lower and and not get the real break that we are expecting but it is a good sign and you can see that the ROG lines here are, are moving up with that little tip moving around and, and hooking back down. Um, so if I bring that all together, then I think that we need to conclude that on the, um, on the daily, <clears throat> Europe is running into resistance with relative strength just rolling over while the S&P is breaking it and hooking back up. So in the near term, it looks as if the S&P has got a little bit more upside potential than Europe. If we move to the weekly, the picture is, is the other way around. Here you can see that Europe is, is picking up relative strength and breaking that downtrend, while the S&P is still in that downtrend and losing relative strength. So if I sum this up, um, long term, Europe over the S&P, short term, the S&P over Europe. You can decide whatever you need to do depending on your time frame and your investment horizon. There's one more thing that I want to share with you this week and that's the ROG for Forex because uh, um, the, the Euro dollar came to life. And if we look at the ROG here, this is a weekly ROG, it's looking at, uh, at weekly trends in currencies. And because everything is on the left-hand side of the graph, it basically means strength for the US dollar. That's what we've seen. We've seen that the US dollar got stronger and stronger and stronger over months already. Now, these tails here uh, are turning back up. So they're moving generally in a positive ROG heading. They're all pointing to that northeastern direction, um, pretty much led by the euro uh, here. So that, that indicates that the, the dollar is getting a bit weaker. It's still long term very strong because this, this is the US dollar, it's on the right hand side. But in the near term, um, the other currencies, especially the Euro, are picking up strength. And if we look at the, um, the, the price chart of Euro dollar, that's very interesting because the, the chart that I keep looking at is the monthly chart for Euro dollar. Because obviously we had that break of that massive support level around 104. And that was back in May, June. And now we, we dipped all the way back to 0.95, which is coincidentally the peak that is below this bottom formation here in 2000. And we're bouncing off that old resistance, which is now support. And I'm looking for Euro dollar to move up to that 104. That, that's, where, that's where the real yeast is. That's where Euro dollar can actually prove um, what the, the main direction of that currency pair is. So long term, that signal, that, that weak signal of breaking below 104 is definitely in play. Right now we're bouncing off old support back to that 104, which is now going to act as resistance. And if you look at the euro dollar daily chart, then you can see that in more detail. 
<clears throat> you can see that that long downtrend that we had for a couple of months is now broken. We are seeing um, higher highs and higher lows emerging out of that bottom formation. And we're running into uh, the first resistance right now as we speak around 102. But I think as we saw on that monthly chart that there is upside potential towards 104. Depending on where that new peak comes and how Euro dollar is going to behave if it reaches 104 will tell us a lot more about the uh, longer term direction of the Euro dollar uh, exchange rate. For, for the near term, I think it's going higher. For the long term, I'm still not very convinced. I think that there is still more downside to come. Thank you for watching and I'm hoping to see you again next week at a new update by RRG Research. Same time, same place.